Welcome. In the previous class, we already talked about the COP22 and the Marrakesh Proclamation. Uh, in this class, we will discuss Kyoto Protocol and Carbon Trading. Now, the concept of Carbon Trading has been confusing for most of the students, so we will mainly focus on Carbon Trading in this class. Now, uh, starting with the Kyoto Protocol, Kyoto Protocol was mainly aimed to reduce the emission and it was adapt adopted on 1997 it came into force on 2015 at the seventh conference of parties at marrakesh there was marrakesh accords that were declared and it stated the first commitment period which will start from 2008 and end in 2012 after that there was a second commitment period which is started from 2013 which will end in 2020 and this was the pre 2020 thrust that we talked about also in the case of marrakesh proclamation now uh, uh, remember if there is a question on marrakesh accords and marrakesh proclamation it would be different because marrakesh accord talks about the seventh conference of parties uh, the seventh session however the recent one which we have discussed is the 22nd conference of parties which is a separate uh, proclamation which has been released now under the first commitment period the idea was to reduce the greenhouse gas emission by 5% against the 1990 level that means whatever was the level in 1990 it should be less than that by 5% however under 2013-20 the idea is to reduce this level by 18% so it is aimed to decrease by 18% now considering this the major focus as i said was reduction in greenhouse gases now there are numerous greenhouse gases that we know those are carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide you have cfcs and so on now out of these carbon dioxide is most prominent and most common gas as a result the major focus was to reduce the emission in terms of carbon when we say reducing the emission in terms of carbon we are mainly focusing on the idea of carbon trading now this carbon trading came into force as an idea which was to reduce the amount of carbon which is one of the major greenhouse gases now what exactly is carbon trading carbon trading is nothing but i can say in simple terms it's just a financial incentive which is aimed to reduce the carbon emissions now let's try to understand this by means of a diagram there are two companies which are producing product x so you have company a and company b both of them are producing same, same product however company a is polluting or releasing certain amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and similarly company b is also reducing certain uh, producing certain amount of carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere you have the emission cap those are the standards so we also call this as a cap and trade cap and trade means you have a cap that has been decided by the national bodies or the government has set the maximum allowances or permissible limit for pollution so that is what is the cap and beyond that cap whatever is there you need to trade okay so you have you also call this feature as cap and trade now what is happening here you have the cap at this level and you are polluting less than the cap that means the fraction which is lying here is unused so this section of the carbon dioxide is unused however company b is is producing much beyond the emission permissible limits so it needs permit for this extra amount of carbon dioxide it is producing now what can they mutually do mutually this company a can sell its permits to the company b and this company b can buy the permit from the company a so company b will buy the permits company b will sell its permits so company b would be fine uh, sorry company a would be financially rewarded since it is selling the permits it would have a financial gain it can be in any form we'll discuss how 
later in this class and company B on the other hand requires this much of carbon dioxide to be produced as an emission from its industry so it would buy the credits and continue with its industry so that would be a kind of mutual balance that could exist now under the Kyoto protocol you had NX1 countries and non-NX1 or we also call it as NXA and NXB so NXA are the developed nations on the other hand NXB are the developing nations now developed nations have a higher standards for the emission cap and producing at that standard becomes difficult for the NXA countries however NXB countries on the other hand have good CREs that is certified emission reduction units as in the case of India we will see later again in this class how that works. So these are some of the ways to understand what exactly is carbon trading. Now in simple terms again I can say one credit unit of uh, carbon trading is equal to one ton of carbon dioxide equivalent. In some standards, for example, the Chicago Commodity Exchange, uh, the exchange market, it is around 100 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So you have different units for different standards. Now when we talk about cap and trade, the important idea here is I can have higher caps and when will I have a higher cap? There can be two cases when I will have higher cap. If I am having more emissions, so I can have a higher emission standard. So say the permissible emission standard for India say is 500. The same in the United States could be raised up to 700. So what is happening? I have raised my minimum permissible cap and I would allow the companies to pollute or to release carbon dioxide up to the level of 700 in the United States as compared to 500 in India. So that is how you can adjust your cap so with higher cap you can make that adjustments and also a higher cap would decrease the value of allowances because since you are having higher cap your value of the allowances that would be permitted in the united states would be much lower as compared to that in india however on the other side if you are having lower cap your allowances would be scarce and those would be overpriced okay so these are the two basic ideas to understand now as i said buyer is paying to pollute as we have discussed in the diagram before and seller who is selling the extra units which is unused on its behalf would be financially rewar rewarded for uh, selling its extra carbon units and that is what we call as carbon credits so the company a would have carbon credits and those credits would be a kind of reward for its selling of extra credits okay so that is what is uh, the the scenario in case of seller and in case of buyer now there were various uh, trading systems that have come into force the eu ets the european union emission trading system is considered as one of the biggest trading systems in the world with nearly 12,000 factories and 25 nations working in pace with the uh, EU emission trading systems and <clears throat> the main idea of the uh, emission trading here is again on behalf of the carbon trading. Similar to this, in 2003, you had climate, uh, climate exchange in Chicago, which was known as CCE, Chicago Climate Exchange, established in 2003. However, this Chicago Climate Exchange was a bit different from the European Union emission trading system. At the Chicago Climate Exchange, the idea was it was free of federal, uh, federal governance. It was a kind of independent voluntary body that was established. And it was not just that the factories were member for it. It incorporated universities. It incorporated states like Michigan. It incorporated cities like Portland, Oregon. So these are some of the cities who have worked for green, green pace and are and were ready to curb the emission standards and to maintain the amount of emission in the atmosphere. Now, to consider this, Kyoto laid down three basic mechanisms, but 
the first of all what is important to understand is the eligibility for kyoto uh, the eligibility that kyoto laid down for carbon trading was firstly there should be a national registry national registry which keeps a record of all the carbon that is being traded and all the trades must be recorded the assigned amount of carbon so assigned amount of carbon dioxide should be recorded again you should uh, the the party should ratify uh, to kyoto protocol so ratification is another important thing that was considered as a basic eligibility and then they must provide an annual report on emission standards so annual report was another important eligibility now considering these eligibility kyoto protocol gave down uh, gave three implementation mechanisms the first was the joint implementation the next was the clean development mechanism and the third was international emission trading now this is somewhat an interesting concept and here is where most of the students get confused joint implementation in simple terms is a relation between nx1 and nx1 nation that means it is a relation only between a developed nation and a developed nation so both the nations should be developed there is no developing nation that is involved it's a kind of joint effort which is worked out on behalf of two developed nations a good example would be ukraine and russia is working on a kind of joint implementation program many countries in eu, EU uh, european union are working on joint implementation so it's a kind of project that works between two developed nations and where both of the nations come close and come together to work on a common idea of reducing the emission and reducing carbon in particular and greenhouse gases in general the next is the clean development mechanism now this is a kind of interesting mechanism uh, you need to understand this in detail so you have two nations you have a developed nation and you have a developing nation so what is happening is developed nation is producing more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as compared to the developing nation so developing nation would sell its credit developed nations would buy the credits however when the developed nation buys the credit it is not rewarding the developing nations financially in terms of monetary uh, policies i could say however this developed nation would plan out something in the developing country for example this company which is providing or selling the credits would be allowed or would be provided uh, say a plan to generate wind energy so this plan to generate wind energy would be established in the developing country by a developed country so clear again it's important to understand that this clean development mechanism talks about relationship between developed nations and developing nations and developed nations are not financially rewarding the developing nations however they would establish kind of industries which are based on renewable energy or uh, help them to provide technologies to reduce emission in the developing nation so they will uh, by and large help developing nations prosper in terms of technology and at the same time they will buy the carbon credits from the developing nations and on behalf of the developing nations they would produce certain amount of extra carbon uh, emission which was which which will be compensated by the developing nation the next is the international emission trading this trading is a kind of very simple trading that occurs in international market so you have one party which sells its extra carbon which is unused from it and the other party buys the carbon uh, which it wants to use and it pays the first country on a financial reward or a financial gain basis so it's kind of financially providing assistance to the other uh, other company uh, or the other country where the company is so these are the three mechanisms that work now based on these three mechanisms you have certain terminologies that you must understand 
The first is under NX B nations, that's the developing nations, you have target to limit the emissions. And these targets are known as assigned amount units, which are known as AAUs. Again, there are three terms which are important to understand. You have removal units. Removal units is solely and solely based on land use activity, uh, the amount of forest activity that is taking place. So, afforestation, uh, reforestation, agroforestry would all come under removal units. So, basically, as I said in the previous lecture on Markish proclamation, we have uh, units, we have plants that absorb carbon and they act as a basically a carbon sink. So, however, we are not controlling carbon emissions directly, but we are allowing that carbon to sink by planting more trees. So, removal units proposes a change in the plan in the land use pattern and the forestry by means of more afforestation, reforestation and agroforestry activities. The next is ERU units which are used under joint implementation. And under the clean development mechanism, we talk about certified emission reduction and that is what we talk about in India. So, in India, we have a national body that works as a CMD authority, that is the clean development uh, mechanism authority and this authority lies under Ministry of Environment and this works in accord with the UNFCC, that is United Nations Framework for climate change and it talks about certified emission units which is a kind of a single unit which is released by the various factories and it works on a kind of clean development mechanism where you have incentives that are coming in for more development in India. Now <clears throat> when we talk about the case study of India let us say you have certain important cases for example the Tamil Nadu spinning mills association. Uh, works to establish more wind power and windmills. So, it has established more than 300 windmills as one of the uh, pilot projects. Again, you have torrent power which is one of the major powers in India. It is using or moving to natural gas and natural gas being a low emission produces less of carbon in the atmosphere. Again, now uh, when we talk about carbon trading, you have two industries that are coming into limelight first is electricity industry and second is uh, carbon uh, sorry cement industry so what happens actually is electricity industry is in te uh, technically if i would say is a major seller and uh, cement industry is a major buyer of carbon credits why because electricity industries or electricity factories are shifting slowly and gradually towards renewable sources of energy. So, you have wind energy, solar energy, geothermal energy, tidal energy. So, with the help of renewable sources of energy, uh, electricity energy is shifting more towards a kind of cleaner resource. So, they have extra credits. So, they usually sell out the carbon credits. However, the cement industry which mainly produces clinkers uh, ha, ex, produces a lot of exhaust in the atmosphere and they are the major buyers of carbon credits. However, India has worked forward for the cement industries and now as a byproduct from clinkers, the cement industry are shifting to fly ash. Fly ash is a similar product which is byproduct which is released from the coal industry and it has a much lesser CER that is the certified emission reduction units. So, you have a uh, much lesser amount of carbon emission that come through fly ash industries, uh, fly ash as compared to clinkers. So, India is also working forward to move from clinkers to fly ash in the, the cement industries. Again, you have establishment of carbon bazaars in India. And these carbon bazaars are a kind of B2B association that is business to business partnership where you have uh, industries coming in and trading their mutual carbon. So, these are some of the breakthrough achievements. Now, what is carbon offset as we know? Carbon offsets are the emissions which are released in the developed nations and are theoretically offsets of whatever uh, is a kind of emission reduction in the developing nation. So, you have on the one side you have a developed nation, on the other side you have a developing nation and a developed nation. So, developed nation would use an extra credit and this would be offset 
by the amount of reduction in the carbon emissions by a developing country and that is what is we call as carbon offsets. So carbon offsets in simple words I can say are a form of trade. If we buy we are reducing the carbon uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. The aim under carbon offset is to reduce uh, to restore more of forest, reduce the deforestation in the nation to come up with more updated power plants and factories that could be in uh, mode of using more of renewable sources of energies as I mentioned before to promote more energy efficient buildings increase uh, uh, energy efficient transport uh, transportation solution as we have talked about the uh, railway electrification by means of renewable energy and also to reduce the global uh, greenhouse emissions in total. So those are the basic ideas under carbon offset. There is one more terminology that is carbon footprints which is off and on used. So this carbon footprint talks about how much carbon we use to produce. So we say mainly 98% of the carbon that is being used comes from the combustion of fossil fuels. So the important idea is to declare uh, to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and switch to alternate uh, measures uh, similar when there was a question in UPSC which talked about uh, energy development as a sustainability uh, so energy mix as a sustainability issue. So those are uh, some of the measures that you must mention in this questions which work on this. So with this we cover the basic idea of carbon trading and Kyoto protocol. We will be covering ozone depletion and Montreal protocol in the further lecture. You can subscribe to our channel for all updates. Have a good day ahead.